All right, hey guys, this is a video response to my first comment ever. It's uh, by Susina. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a girl or a guy. The name really doesn't give anything away. Uh, but here goes. Um, I see, I read the comment, and if you just read the comment, it should be somewhere down on my first video. Um, she, or he, Susina claims um, that she was not bought. Susina says, because I don't want to say she or he, if it's not a she or a he, uh, says that they were bought up in no religious household and that they also um, didn't come to a belief in a God and that my experience, um, it mirrors her experience, uh, it mirrors Susina's experience, but in reverse. And to that, I just say I'm sorry. I, I really wish I was a part of the church that you attempted to join. Um, I'm constantly, even at my own church, uh, among my own brethren, I'm preaching the gospel. I don't know who God has saved yet. I don't know if their eyes have been opened yet or not. So I'm sorry. If I was a part of your church, I would have done everything in my power to find out if you were a believer. And if you weren't, I would have treated you with special care. And I would have been preaching the gospel to you. Um, as far as it sucking that people are tortured forever, again, man, I'm... You saw in my first video, I really don't like it. Like, it, it sucks for me as a Christian. It's just like, I know that's where I deserve to be. I know I deserve to be in hell with everybody else. Uh, yet God opened my eyes. And it's what really helps me love God, that he, he didn't choose that for me. And he wanted me to be a, a Christian. And he chose to be involved in my life. So I feel sorry. And it does suck for me. Like, one... Uh, some Christ some atheists I know, excuse me, actually have a problem with the idea of hell, and most atheists have a problem with the idea of hell. Uh, the idea of hell. Um, I have several atheist friends that I talk to, and one of them is, he's a really good friend of mine, and he's, that's his biggest problem is the idea of hell in accepting God. Um, I really can't say too much about that except for, it's what God chose to do. Uh, and also it's an expression of his hatred towards sin and rejection of sin. Um, that's all I can really say about that. Uh, but as far as what it takes to get to heaven or what it takes to be a Christian, it's really not becoming a church member or, uh, you know, hanging out with only Christians. You know, I can, I can be a, uh, I can sit in a car, I can sit in a garage all day and it doesn't make me a car. Right. And I can also, um, hang around a bunch of cars, you know, I don't know. It really doesn't make me a car either. Uh, what, what unites all Christians, like you said, uh, what united all atheists was, it was a feeling that God doesn't exist. Uh, what unites all Christians is not a feeling that God exists, but it's a, it's a belief in what takes a person to heaven. Um, I can simply give you a, uh, a few things, like the idea of forgiveness. Uh, this is what leads people to believe that there are things, uh, such a thing as God, is these things that exist in humanity, like qualities like forgiveness and qualities like love, qualities like justice. Uh, and on those bases is what I wish to, I guess, expound the gospel on. Uh, forgiveness is one thing that um, many people don't quite understand, but I just give it, break it apart here. Forgiveness is never earned. Uh, let's say you wrong me, Susina, you come to my house, you punch me in the face and then somewhere down the line, you're like, man, I really wronged that person. You know, I punched him right in the face and I, I feel bad about it. So you apologize. In whose hands do you believe forgiveness lies? In other words, no matter what you do, forgiveness is in my hands. If you give, if you say, Hey, well, here's a million dollars. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Even if I take the million dollars, I can be like, well, I don't want to forgive you. I'm sorry. Thanks for giving me the million dollars, but you wronged me and I'm going to hate you for the rest of my life. You know, like I could be that way. Uh, forgiveness lies in my hands. And certainly if I take the million dollars and forgive you, would you say that that's forgiveness? Uh, I certainly wouldn't. I wouldn't say that if I take the million dollars that I have forgiven you in any sense, because I don't think forgiveness has to be bought or earned. I think forgiveness is just given. So in the same way, if we have the concept or an idea of God, a basic definition would be the greatest possible being. And obviously, if we have an idea of God, 
as the greatest possible being, then he has to also demonstrate his forgiveness. And I don't think that it would be in so much words as it would be in actions. Uh, and the reason being is we have a saying here among human beings that uh, actions speak louder than words. And I believe they certainly do, especially in the case of a God. Because if we have the idea of a God, anyone can claim to be a God. I can tell you I'm a God and write you a letter. Or I can t claim to you that I'm a God and speak to you through certain people, um, which would be uh, the concept of prophets in religion. And it would also be the concept of scriptures in religion. I don't think that that by any means demonstrates God's greatness, seeing as how it's not personal. It's not, um, and it's not action oriented. If I demonstrate, let's say I'm married to somebody and I can demonstrate to her my forgiveness by continually accepting her uh, if she committed adultery, let's say she cheated on me or whatever. Um, I continually demonstrate my forgiveness by acting in a way that is loving and forgiving towards her, continually accepting her even though what she did to me was wrong. Uh, in the same way, God's demonstration of forgiveness has to be higher than man's because he, he is the greatest possible being in existence. So if God is demonstrating forgiveness to us, it must be in a way that is that is not just written, it's not just spoken, it's a way that is demonstrated. And that way no one would have an excuse that day before God that he did, that he claimed he was a forgiving, a forgiving God or a loving God, but he never demonstrated it. And if um, you were involved in a Christian experience, uh, you do understand that um, hopefully you were taught, and if you weren't, and I feel, again, I apologize, I'm not, I wasn't a member of that church, um, but that Jesus is God. And what he came to do was he emptied himself out. He became a man. Uh, in other words, he left all his godly powers without leaving his moral perfection. And he lived a perfect life. And he died so that you could be forgiven of all your sins. Uh, and I say could be. Again, Jesus Christ said he came to die for his sheep. He died that the, so that those who would believe in him would be forgiven of all their sins. It's not a question in my mind. Uh, Jesus died for all of my sins, and that's what he came to do. He came to show me God's forgiveness. Um, so based on forgiveness, it's in the hands of the one forgiving. Yet most religions they teach, it's in the hands of the one trying to be forgiven. In other words, most religions will teach you, every other religion I've studied, I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I say most, it's every religion that I've studied, even the cults among Christianity will teach you that you have to do something in order to get to heaven. A basic truth about God is in order to get to heaven, you have to be forgiven uh, because there is a, there remains a barrier between us and God and it's that he is morally perfect and we are not. So in other words, sin. Sin is the barrier between us and God. Most religions will teach you there is that barrier. God is perfect, we're not perfect. Uh, and even if they don't, we can, we can logically come to those conclusions based on what we have in this life. Um, some of the ways you can do that I, I could be explained later if you want to comment or respond uh, to that then I could show you that uh, we can come to the logical conclusion that God is perfect and that us as human beings are not uh, but nevertheless it's, it still remains the fact that there is a barrier between us and God and Jesus came to fix that barrier to get rid of it uh, pretty much pay for it uh, so again it's the same concept with love if I love somebody, let's say I love you, Susina, you know, I don't know. Uh, if I love you, no matter what you do to wrong me, I'm going to accept you. So in the same way I told you I was an atheist before I became a Christian, it didn't matter how many times I wronged God or cursed God or ignored God, believed he didn't exist, whatever the case is, um, God still loved me and accepted me. Because all of those sins that I had committed against God are taken care of at the cross of Christ. All it takes for anybody to, to get to heaven. It's not about doing good things. Again, that is against the very idea of forgiveness. That has that doesn't even go along with forgiveness. Because if you have somebody that's ever wronged you, you know that it's in your hands to forgive that person. So it's not in our hands to earn God's forgiveness. Because then again, it's not a demonstration of forgiveness. It's in God's hands to demonstrate to us that he's forgiven us because he is the greater being. The greater being has to show the lesser being, God, to humans, that he is a being of forgiveness, and it's done through actions. So God is able to forgive us through someone paying for what we've done wrong, and that's Jesus Christ. 
All that's left for us to do is trust Jesus as our God, uh, that he is God and he came to die for our sins, and we trust him to take us to heaven. And it's a much greater way of, it's the only way, because it's the only perfect way of getting to heaven. Um, he has already taken care of it all, and we can be confident we're going, because it's not what we have done for God, which is imperfect and which fails every day. I could say, hey, God, just take me to heaven if I read the Bible every day for the rest of my life. And it's like, well, I'm not going to do that, number one. And number two, it doesn't take care of the fact that I sinned. Does me showing you that I, does me continually doing something good for you, does that take away the bad that I've done? It may in a personal relationship, but in a relationship between a judge and the person he's judging, it doesn't. In other words, it's like trying to bribe a judge. Since God created everything that makes him the judge, he has to judge the wrong actions we do. And he's chosen to do that by eternally separating himself from that. In other words, he has chosen to do it by punishing sins in hell. Um, so in terms of a judge, it doesn't fix the relationship. Uh, it doesn't fix the problem. The problem is sin. And no matter how many times I try to cover up sin with good actions, it, do it doesn't work. Uh, the judge has to hold us accountable for the things we've done wrong. Otherwise, he's not a just judge. Uh, so we see that in the cross of Christ, we see a demonstration of justice and that the sins that God forgives me for are not just forgotten. They're paid for by Jesus Christ. That's the only way to be forgiven of sins is by trusting Jesus. And then he takes care of your sins in the same way a parent, a loving parent will pay for the, the ticket of their child that's gotten in trouble and will bail their kid out of jail when they've messed up. You know, uh, that's what God does for us. Justice is taken care of and that someone does pay for our sins, and that's Jesus Christ. Uh, and again, I think that's a much greater message than any message that is taught in any other religion. If I don't know that I'm accepted by God, how would I live? Uh, and then again, that's what's taught. If you don't know you're going to heaven, then you don't know if God ultimately accepts you. Whereas in Christianity, everything is taken care of. Most of the time in Christianity, if you read the Bible, it's all in past tense. Like God talks about how we're glorified. In other words, we're already in heaven. We've been perfected for all time uh, through the cross of Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's all in past tense. And it gives me great comfort as a Christian that I am going to heaven through faith in Jesus. It's not by works. It's not by something I do. It's just by trusting in the forgiveness of the being that is greater than I am. It's in trusting uh, God to save me. Uh, again, we see the concept and even in the Old Testament, uh, David calls God the God of his salvation without even knowing that Christ would exist and die for his sins on the cross. You know, he still calls God the God of his salvation. And it's the same here. God is the one saving me. It's a demonstration of love. It explains justice. It explains forgiveness. Uh, it all depends on God. You have to trust Jesus Christ. You know, John 3.16, why is it so famous? Because it tells Christians how to get to heaven. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. So if you believe in Jesus, then you will go to heaven. It's just about trusting him. It's not about living a good life, turning away from sin. It's not about going to church or doing good things. It's just about trusting him. If you say, well, yeah, I believe in Jesus and I, and I do good things to get to heaven, then you're not really believing in Jesus. Belief means to trust. It's a dependence on Jesus that he's going to take you. If you say you're doing good things to get to heaven, you're trusting in yourself. If you're trusting in yourself, you're never going to make it because you're not perfect. You don't meet God's standards. So uh, that is one thing that uh, I just want to get across. Uh, it's a comment to Susina. It's a response in the comment uh, from the comments to Susina. Uh, I really hope you watch this. It's weird. You know, I have no views. I have like 10 views and I get one response. You know, I don't know. God is in control of all, all things and maybe that's why he did it. Uh, he maybe had you watch my video even though it's only got 10 views in the entire world. So that you can, so I can make this video response, and perhaps he might move and open your eyes. Um, I hope he does. And if you have any further questions or anything, just either comment or uh, make a video response, or just uh, get in touch with me somehow. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Again, I wish I was at your church so I could have explained to these two things in person.